Hey, today we're going to learn about how to make mandalas using Photoshop and photographs of yours. Um, mandalas can also be used called as tessellations um, and we are going to learn today how to do this. So you're going to be creating a photograph that looks like this. We're going to be working on it together, but I want to show you what the finished project looks like. It always looks pretty cool. It looks like right now you get these really neat geometric patterns within your photographs when you do it correctly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be creating a new file that is a mandala. So to do that, let me just scooch this down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go file and then I'm going to go File New. You can't quite see this in the thing, but File New. From there, I'm going to call this Mandela 8 inches. And so I'm then going to change the width to 8 inches wide. So make sure it says inches and not pixels. 8 inches tall. So again, inches, not pixels. And 300 resolution, 300 resolution, so that I can make sure that uh, if I want to print it later on, you get the right resolution for printing. I'm going to then say OK. From there, I'm going to get the rulers tool up so that way it's um, measured correctly. And to do that, I go to View, Rulers. From there, I kind of click in the middle of the ruler and drag it to four inches, so that way it's perfectly in the center. And then from there, I also grab in the middle of the second ruler at the very top and drag that down to four inches. So you have two equally this. So I'm sorry, you have four equal squares. They're all four inch squares. From there, I'm going to file, save as. And then I'm going to save it on my desktop as Mandela 8 inches. Save so that way if I want to do this again, I can have this as a template always. So think of this as your template. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the folder, the class folder. And I'm going to find a flower in there that I actually took a picture of so you guys can use this for your project. It's in your period. It's called Flower for Mandela. And I'm just going to open this as a separate file. And so this photograph was actually taken on my new Sony mirrorless camera. I really like it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually crop this down to a four inch square so that way it kind of goes in the mandala. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this crop tool and ordinarily it would be unconstrained which means that it would just kind of go to whatever size the the crop is so it kind of usually starts out right there but for this purposes we're actually going to do a square so we can actually change it on the top left hand side to one by one square from there what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of scooch it around to a specific area that i want to crop to and I want to make sure to kind of crop maybe at least one side, maybe two sides to make a really interesting geometric character um, when I do my Mandela. After I'm done with the crop, I'm going to press check. I'm also kind of going to move my crop tool to the move tool so that way if I want to change anything, I can do that and it won't be like keep on giving me the thing saying, are you sure for the crop every other second. From there, I'm going to change the image size to 4 inch square, so I'm going to go image, image size. Right now it's 5.38 square, so I'm changing that really quickly. I'm going to change the height to 4, and then voila, since it was a square, the width automatically changes to that. I'm also going to change the resolution to 300 so that it's the same as what's on the mandala, so that way it'll fit perfectly in that mandala, because remember the mandala we separated it into four quadrants and then I'm going to say OK. I'm going to scooch this over by kind of clicking on where the things that says Flower Mandela. I'm going to scooch that over here. I'm going to use that Move tool in Photoshop and I'm going to press that Move tool. I'm going to press it in the middle of this photograph 
And I think this photograph will look best in the top right hand corner. So I'm going to scooch it over here and I'm going to get it as perfectly in the center and lined up perfect. And then from there, what I see, you made a new layer. So there's a background layer, there's a layer one. I'm going to duplicate this layer by going to layer, duplicate layer. I'm going to say OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scooch this over to the right hand side. I then go edit, transform, flip horizontal. And then already you can see the two parts are touching. They're going hello. I'm going to go back to layer one. Go to layer, duplicate layer, say OK. And then I'm going to scooch this over down to the bottom. I'm going to go edit, transform, flip vertical. So again, you see that the leaves touch perfectly. It looks really good. It's all put in the spot. And then last, I go back to layer one, duplicate layer, say OK. Then I scooch this over here. And then I go edit, transform, flip vertical. And then I also want to flip horizontal as well. Edit transform, flip horizontal. Oh, sorry, let me go back. Let me just go back. So I want flip horizontal and then flip vertical. And then voila, you've got a really gorgeous picture. What I usually do is I then take the move tool and I kind of scooch the little guidelines out of place just so that I can make sure it looks all even and it does. There's no white spots, which is wonderful. I'm then going to merge all the layers together by going layer, merge visible, and you've got this gorgeous photograph. It's on its own. It looks like a little keyhole or something in the middle. I can then adjust the brightness of contrast by going image adjustment, brightness contrast, maybe add some, add some contrast to it. I can also change the color by color balance, image adjustment color balance, add some more red, maybe some more magenta, make it all groovy, et voila, it looks kind of cool, maybe a little much, but whatever. I'm then going to go file, save as, and then save it as my flower mandala. And save it to your desktop, actually save it as last name, first name, Flower Mandela 1, because that's your first one. Then from there you're going to make three more mandalas using the four inch square, and then you're going to make another mandala doing a two inch square. I've even had students do half inch squares, one inch squares, just know that each time that you add more squares you just have to kind of use the guidelines to get, make sure it's nice and even and looks really wonderful. So if you were doing one inch squares, you would just keep on bringing it down to one inches. Okay, good stuff. Good luck. I look forward to seeing what sort of magic you make. Thanks.